Hey friends, it's David from Icon Motorsports here. Today we're going to talk about our new RAU Motorcycle Bluetooth Communicator. So with the new RAU Communicator, biggest thing here is you can listen to your music, you can take phone calls, and you can communicate with up to three other riders plus yourself. It's got the new audio overlay technology from Cena. But what that does is it lets you listen to music and talk to people at the same time. On some of the older devices, the music would shut off completely, but now with this new technology, you can actually hear your music and talk at the same time, which I like because it doesn't cut off my music, which to me, listening to the tunes is the most important part about this thing. So let's take this thing out and see what we've got in here. So right on top, we have the guts of the communicator itself. We have a boom mic. Underneath the tray, lift this up. We've got a quick start guide with other manuals. And we've got the bag with the speakers, charging cord, and all the other wired mic and everything else you need to get this thing on your helmet. So, we're going to go through here and figure out what we want to use to get this onto our helmet. You've got the main unit, you've got a boom mic, you also have a wired mic. You can go either way here. Traditionally, a boom mic is for an open face helmet. Uh, depending on how much room you have in the jaw of your helmet, you can go either way. It doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong. Um, in this case, we're going to use the wired mic for the install today. So, take that guy out, set it aside here. And we've got two speakers. Got another little bag that has the uh, hook and loop pieces for the speakers, the microphone, and if you do use the boom mic, you can put the little muff on it to get rid of the road noise. You've got a couple different options as far as how you want to attach the main unit to the helmet. Then you've got a charging cord here. It's just a normal micro USB that you might have on your cell phone or any other devices. So we've got the two speakers, so we'll get those out. And then we'll get the hook and loop pieces out to attach the speakers to the inside of the helmet. Then I also want one of these oval pieces to, that's where we mount the mic and the chin bar of the helmet. Let's get this thing on a helmet. We'll scoot this guy over here. First thing I want to do is just get inside of the helmet and get rid of the parts that I need to make it clear to install this piece. So remove the cheek pads. On the air form here we use two snaps and some velcro. Um, some of them are all snaps, some of them have the combination of the two. So throw that over to the side. We'll grab this other cheek pad out of here. Set that aside. So we're going to grab the main unit first to install that. So like I said earlier we're going to use the hook and loop situation to attach this to our helmet. So I'm going to grab the hook piece first peel off the backing. I'm going to stick it right to the back of here. It's pretty hard to get wrong. There's a little indention on the back of the unit here that you can set the hook or loop right into. Make sure that's stuck in there. And I'll grab the loop piece slowly. And then I'll stick this to the back here. And then I'm going to go and look at the helmet to figure out where I want to mount it. So like I said, on this one I want to mount it right back over here. So I'm going to get it lined up to where I think it's going to look cool. I'm going to stick it right on there. And just hold some nice firm pressure on there to make sure it's stuck. There you go, it's on there. So the next thing we're going to do, is we're going to get into mounting the speakers. So the Airform does have speaker pockets cut out of the EPS, so it's really easy to know your placement. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab the loop piece and peel the backing off. Stick this right into the cutout inside the EPS, right there. Then we'll flip it over here, get the strap out of the way, grab the other piece of loop, and we'll go ahead and put this right in there as well. So let me get that in there. You can see that right in that cutout in the EPS, so that's where we're going to place the speaker. So we'll grab one of the speakers, doesn't matter which one. The speaker goes right in here, 
and then I usually run the cable right down through there so that way the Velcro on this cheek pad is holding the, the wire down. The same thing on this side. So I'll grab this speaker, get that out of the way, place it in there with the wire pointing toward the back. So then we'll go over here to this bundle of wires, get rid of this twisty tie, get this thing untangled. You see the mic is red, and then you've got left and right speakers. So the shorter wire is obviously for the speaker that's right here because it doesn't have to go as far. So we'll get this guy plugged right into that speaker. There's only one way to do this. There's a little arrow on the plug on both the female and male side. So that way you can only do it one way. You can't reverse it. And we'll plug in the other side. Same way. Next thing I want to do is grab the piece of hook and loop for the microphone. So that's this oval piece right here. That way you can move it up and down a little bit or side to side once you get it mounted into the chin bar of the helmet. So we're going to mount the mic right in the middle here. So that way I'm between the two vents and below the top one. So I'll put the piece of loop right there. I'll grab the mic, remove the twisty tie. Again, only one way to plug it in. You can't do it the backwards way. And then we'll mount that thing right there. So you'll notice that we've got a bit of wire here. So what I like to do, just remove the comfort liner the two snaps on the bottom, and I lift it up enough just to tuck those wires from the speakers that we had pointing towards the back of the helmet, get those tucked in nicely. And then with the rest of the wire, I try to strategically place them so it's not going to create like any pressure points on my head. Just try to make it as flat as possible and as comfortable as possible. So they're all hidden back there. I'm going to snap it back in just like that. Then I'll grab my cheek pad. Make sure that wire's out of the way. Tuck this thing in just like that. Put them back in there. That's nice and clean. Nice and clean the wire ran in there. I'm going to flip around do the last cheek pad. Get that back in there. There you go. It's fully installed. You can barely even tell anything's in there except for the wire coming from the unit to the inside of the helmet. So now we're going to get through how to use this thing. The first thing you want to do is make sure that it's charged. So grab your micro USB cable that comes with it, or if you have another one from a cell phone or some other device, go ahead and plug that thing in. The charging port is right here on the back. So when you plug this in, you'll have a red light, means it's charging. When that light turns blue, it's all charged up, ready to go. So the first thing you want to do is turn this guy on. To do that, you hold the plus button and the center button at the same time. You'll hear it say hello. You'll see the button start flashing. Now you're ready to pair your phone. So what you want to do is go into your Bluetooth settings on your phone, make sure it's turned on, and then you hold the center button for 10 seconds. So you hear it say configuration menu, then you hit the plus. It goes into that, then you'll see it pop up on your Bluetooth. It's right here, so I'm going to click on Senna SFR Volume 1. And then once it connects, it'll say your headset is paired. So one thing of note, when you're connecting your phone to it right off the bat, you're going to hold that button down for 10 seconds. So about 5 seconds, you're going to hear it say intercom pairing. Keep holding the button because you don't want to connect to another intercom yet. You want to hook up your phone first. So once you do that, like I said, hold the button down go through the intercom pairing, wait another five seconds, you'll go to configuration menu, that's when you hit this front button for plus, and you'll hear phone pairing in your ear, and then that, that's when you go to your phone, to your Bluetooth, find it where it says Senna SFR, click on that, and it should connect. At that point, you can swipe up, play some music, and you can rock and roll. Once you've got your phone connected, you've got your music playing, the front button, volume up, rear button, volume down. If you want to change the song, press and hold the front button. That'll go to the next song. Same thing with the, if you want to go back to the beginning of your song, hit it real quick back or hold it back 
and that'll go to this previous song. Let's say you're running down the road, your phone's ringing, you want to answer it, press the middle button and just say hello, talk like on a normal phone. If you don't want to answer it, you can either let it do its thing or you can hold it for two seconds and it'll end the call. So let's get these things paired up. So the first thing we're going to do is turn them on. Next thing we need to do is hold the center button on each of them for five seconds. At five seconds, you'll hear the prompt that says intercom pairing. At that point, you'll hear some beeping, both of the people that have these on. So then what you want to do is just tap the center. You'll hear it say intercom connected. If you want to add a third or a fourth friend, you can go ahead and do that. Same deal we just did, holding for five seconds. Tap once to get this guy connected like we did. Tap twice to get your third friend connected. And tap three times to get L number four connected. Very simple. I should also mention that there's a Senna SF Utility app that you can get from the App Store. I believe it's